After the Borgata, Karan and I drive five hours back to the nation's capital. I've never been before, so it was a must see for me at least, and the energy was amazing. Enough sightseeing, we hear there's a large game brewing at MGM National Harbor. We're gonna take a shot today for the vlog. I'm into the 5, 10, 25 game for $2,000. The first hand of the night, I look down at pocket aces from the big blind. This is a good sign for the rest of the session. Considering the fact we decided to start this vlog at just after one in the morning. I'm in the big blind, I'm in the 10. So technically under the gun is the 25, but the actual under the gun raises it up to $60 and the hijack puts in the call as well. Action's back over to me in the big blind. Am I gonna play for $60? Absolutely not. I'm coming in for a three bet. I make it $250. My logic here is I wanna go three X for the raise plus another X for the hijack calling. I could probably even size up to like $300 considering the fact if anyone calls, I'll be out of position. Nevertheless though, we're going three ways to a flop here in the first hand that I literally play at this 5, 10, 25. We see a flop of Jack, Jack, three rainbow. Not exactly the best board because hands like ace, Jack, king, Jack now have us beat, although we do have two aces in our hand and our opponent's really gonna be calling $250 pre with king, Jack suited. Maybe, but I'm not too sure. So I decided to go for a C bet here of $250, the same bet I made pre-flop, one third the size of the pot. Under the gun puts in the call and the hijack gets out of the way. When under the gun calls here, it's likely he does have a jack. He could still also have hands like kings, queens, maybe pocket tens or nines. There's really no other draws here for him to have. So he either has a hand like ace jack, king jack, or he has a pocket pair that we have beat. When he puts in the call, we're off to a turn which comes a nine of clubs. Really shouldn't change too much unless he has a hand like pocket nines. Although I think a small portion of the time pocket nines are just gonna fold out on the flop. So I'm not really too worried about this card. Still, when I get called on the flop, he's gonna have a lot of jacks in his range. So I decided to check it over to him. It's also deceptive because he doesn't really think I'm gonna be checking pocket aces here. So when he bets out now into me, I'm obviously never gonna be folding. Well, I have a raising range in this spot. If I had a hand like pocket nines myself, I probably wouldn't be raising here. I would just trap considering I have the best hand like 99% of the time. So when he bets out for $315, it's pretty much a no brainer decision for me. Have to be putting in the call here with pocket aces. And that brings in the deuce of diamonds on the river, a pretty big brick. Now most of you would just check over to under the gun here considering he bet on the turn, but I actually decide to lead out into here if he had a hand like queens or kings he's probably just gonna check behind on the river that was my logic and if I bet out here he might just have to pay me off for a small bet around a third the size of the pot of course if he has a hand that has a jack in it he's just gonna rip on us and we're in a gross spot but uh, I decided to lead out into him here for five hundred and twenty five dollars he hems and haws and thinks about it for a little while which is definitely good news for us I'm hoping he just tosses in a chip and we'll scoop this large pot but that's not what he does he decides to jam all all in covering me for around $1,200 effective, $675 more for me to call. And uh, obviously it's a gross spot. I mentioned that if he jams here, he probably just has a jack, but I really can't get away from it here for $675 more. It's like $675 to win just over $4,000. So uh, yeah, I put it in the middle here, not loving life, knowing I'm probably beat. And I turn over pocket aces and he turns over a hand I didn't expect to see, pocket nines. So he calls me for 250 pre with nines. That makes some sense. His call on the flop is a little bit more suspect. And then of course he turns the boat because why not? He can't just have king jack or ace jack. He has to have the boat on the turn. And just like that, we're gonna lose a $4,300 pot the first hand of the night. Shot taking here at 5, 10, 25, not going off to a great start, but no worries, we brought another bullet. We're in for an additional $2,000. Make our life a little bit better, some new players sit down, one of which comes with a gift. Boba T Mochi, so of course I consume that, and we're on to the next hand here. Downgrading from pocket aces to ace king of diamonds. I'm in the third blind, the $25 blind to be exact. Under the gun limps, and Karan, our buddy, raises it up to 125 from the button. Obviously, I'm coming in for a raise here with ace king of diamonds. We're stuck 2K, and ace king of diamonds is a premium, at least in my book, so I'm gonna three bet him to $325. The under the gun snap calls, which is definitely a 
weird line. He limped and then called my $325 raise. Pretty strange. Karan gets out of the way and we're heads up out of position to a flop which gives us two overs and some backdoor draws such as Broadway and the nut flush. 775 in the middle. Gotta go for a C bet here. I'm gonna have all the strong hands like nines, tens, queens, ace queen, queen 10, etc. So I lead out here for $215. The under the gun tosses in one pumpkin. That's what they call it for a thousand dollars, but he announces a raise to $750. I do have some backdoor draws here, but if I call this $750 raise, I'm just not exactly too deep here. So I decide to let go of my hand and wait for a better spot. I know the viewers of my channel are a savvy bunch. So with all the craziness going on in the world right now, the last thing you guys need is someone stealing your identity. The crazy part is half of all Americans have already been victims of identity theft in their life. And every 14 seconds that goes by, another person falls victim to identity fraud. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aura, the sponsor for this video. Aura is a digital security solution that helps protect your identity online accounts and devices with just one subscription. Their motto is you do everything online and we help you do it safely. You'll get alerted to fraud and threats fast. Like if your online passwords were leaked online or if someone tries to open a bank account in your name and as an added bonus, Aura will protect all your devices from malware and encrypt your Wi-Fi connection so you can shop, bank and stream online securely. And people who are active on social media are 30% more likely to have their details stolen when compared to other people. But with an easy and sleek online dashboard, Aura sends alerts straight to your phone, keeping you in control and guiding you through solving any issues. And I know subscribers of my channel are all high rollers, so they got $1 million in identity theft insurance to help recover eligible losses with the help of experienced US-backed customer support that has your back. If you have family that's worth protecting, then I highly recommend Aura. We pick up pocket aces for the second time of the night. I'm in the cutoff, I have 1300 in my stack, and I raise it up to $65 over that $25 third blind. And uh, unfortunately, everybody folds. So uh, Poker God's teasing us there with pocket aces. At 2.30 in the morning, it's getting a little bit funky. People are doing push-ups, and I'm looking down at 8-7 of spades from the big blind. Still around 1300 in my stack. And under the gun calls the $25 third blind. I have seven, eight of spades and the actions on me, I complete for $25. Under the gun checks and we're heads up to a flop, which comes six, five deuce with two spades. Pretty great board for us. We have two overs and without having a straight flush draw, we basically have it. We have the open and straight draw and we have the flush draw. I decide to check my option. The under the gun bets out here for $50 into the $50 pot. So it's exactly a pot size bet. And uh, I could be going for a raise here. And if we open up the solver here we can see that when he goes for a bet on this flop 7-8 suited here is going to be a lot of the time just calling but occasionally it's going to be going for a raise in this moment i decide just to start with a call and see what the turn card brings in when the five of diamond peels off, I elect to check again, not really gonna have a leading range on this board. The opponent now decides to bet $100 into the pot, which is a fairly large bet. Considering the fact I just have eight high, I have all my draws. If we go back into the solver here, we can see that eight seven suited is one of the best candidates to go for a check raise here. The hands that should be calling are pocket sevens through pocket jacks, all of my over pairs. And the hands that should be raising are like my suited one gappers and suited connectors, along with ace five and king five suited which makes a lot of sense so of course i'm gonna go for the raise here put him to the test i have eight high here if he has a strong hand maybe we can suck out on the river so i decided to check raise here to 275 dollars could have even sized up a little bit more to like 350 considering i'm out of position back over to the opponent here this is why i like a check raise if you look at it, the range that's supposed to be calling here it's all of his over pairs and uh pretty much his fives and his suited spade hands as well as his boats and quads so when you're hearing me list out all the hands he can call with here it's a pretty narrow range, not too many combos. That's why this check raise is gonna get through a large portion of the time. He's just gonna have to fold around 55% of the time. And a lot of the hands that he's calling can't really face a river jam if I decide to do so. So I really like my raise here. And uh, when he mucks his cards, we're gonna take down that pot. However, I'm stuck 2,500 on the session.
Next thing I note, we have 1100 in our stack. I looked down at Pocket Jacks. It's a $25 bomb pot for a time. If you guys aren't familiar with larger games, sometimes instead of raking it, they just do a bomb pot for time. Or you can elect not to do the bomb pot and just pay your seven or $15 every half an hour. Either way though, we put in the $25 and we're off to a flop. A common reoccurrence on this channel is every time there's a bomb pot, a splash pot, etc. I always pick up very strong pocket pairs. No different here. When the flop comes 10, 8, 6, pretty connected with two diamonds and 7, 9 having the straight. The action chucks over to Karan and Under the Gun who bets out for $75. When Under the Gun plus one puts in the call, I'm in middle position. Am I going to go for a check raise here? It's doubtful. I'm only really going to get called by two pair sets and nut flush draws. So I like to put in the $75 and see what the turn card brings in, which comes the five of diamonds. The action checks around on the turn. I'm not going to be stabbing here. Although I do have the Jack of Diamonds to hopefully bail me out on the river. When the river comes the nine of spades and the action checks around again, I turn my cards over pretty confidently. When the action gets checked around on the turn in the river, it's likely we could scoop this pot until the big blind turns over a river two pair. Nine to six offsuit, that's gonna take it down. And unfortunately, we just can't get anything going here at MGM National Harbor. Let's get a bang for the vlog. Bang. Next thing to note, we look down at Ace King offsuit from the cutoff. Action folds around to me, and I make a standard open here for $65. The button folds, and the action's on the small blind, and he three bets now to $275. Another cool feature of this solver is you can do pre flop action here. So you can see from the cutoff here, I'm supposed to be opening up a very wide range for around two and a half big blinds, which is basically what I did. When the button folds, the action's on the small blind here, and you can see that the opponent has a mixed strategy here. The red is going to be raising, green is calling, and blue is folding. You can see he's doing a lot of raising with his premium hands and uh, just calling with a lot of his suited one gappers and uh, other suited hands. So when he decides to three bet me here, I already know he's going to be at the top portion of his range. With my exact hand here, you can see that I'm really only supposed to be ripping it in with aces, ace king, pocket kings, a little bit of ace king offsuit, a little bit of queens, and a little bit of jacks. For the most part, I'm just going to be calling with all of my other pocket pairs. All of my suited tens, suited jacks, and suited queens probably should just be calling. And the rest of my hands, I'm just gonna be folding. Also interesting to note, I should be calling here with ace five suited and ace four suited to have possibilities of flopping some wheel straights and connecting with lower boards that come like six, five, or four high. So yeah, as you can see, ace king offsuit here is a mixed strategy between calling and four betting. Ace king suited is 100% four bet. Let's go back into real time and see what I do. I'm stuck in the session here. I'm not gonna be playing this one cautiously. I'm gonna rip it all in for $950. Trying to put maximum pressure on the opponent. If he folds, we take down the 275. If he calls, oh well, maybe we're up against queens or jacks, we're in a flipping situation. Sure, he could have kings or aces, but that's just the nature of the beast. He doesn't have it this time though, when I rip it all in, he mucks his cards. $275 coming my way without even having to see a flop, so uh, that's pretty great news. Last hand of the night, I look down at the pocket nueves from middle position. The action folds to me and I raise it up to $65. Pretty standard so far. Also standard is when we get three callers. So we're going four ways to a flop here, which gives us an overpair. It comes three, deuce, deuce. Obviously a rainbow board, there's around $260 in the middle and the action's on me. And considering I'm out of position and we're multi-weight here, I wanna protect my hand against hands like ace four, maybe some over cards like king, queen suited, ace, king suited. So I like to go for a half pot size bet here of $130. The button puts in the call and the small blind does as well. Pretty strange, not exactly sure what they have. Maybe it's possible I have them beat. Maybe they have my favorite hand, pocket sevens, maybe pocket eights. I don't really think they're gonna be calling here with ace, king, unless it's a suited variety, maybe, but uh, that's ambitious. But let's not count out the fourth player in this hand here. He hasn't had a chance to act yet, and he makes himself known when he raises to $500. What is he representing here against three other opponents? Isn't there really no draws on the board? So if he had a hand like pocket threes, he has his board absolutely locked up. Pocket deuces is very unlikely, although he could have a hand like ace deuce. Other than that, what is he really representing here? Still, pocket nines is in a really weird spot. I'm not closing the action, meaning if I call here, other players could do something as well. So I don't really like this spot and I muck my hand, but let's see what happens for the rest of this hand. The button and the small blind both put in the $500. When the turn comes the king of spades, the action ends up getting checked around, which brings in the river 10 of diamonds. Under the gun now bets out for $500 
and the button decides to jam for $1,500. For $1,000 more, Under the Gun ends up mucking and showing a deuce, so he flop trips and ends up folding, which is bad news for us because the button starts laughing and doesn't show his hand. And uh, just like that, that's gonna wrap up our session. We rack up what's left of our chips and head to the cage. All right, you guys, that wraps up our session here from MGM National Harbor. It's 5, 10 in the morning and I'm exhausted. Got out of that game for a loss of $3,200. Ended up cashing like $750 or something like that. Brutal session here at 51025. Just couldn't get anything going, but met a lot of cool people tonight. And I saw a lot of funny things. So definitely enjoy the time. If you guys want to help make my time a little better, drop a subscribe, hit the like button, and comment, all that jazz. And uh, good luck on the felt. I hope you guys run a little bit better than me. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.